Hello and welcome back to the Data Unite channel. Today we are going to understand how to implement the knife bias uh, machine learning model on a real world data set where we are interested to know whether an email is a spam or not a spam. Um, as you can see here, I have already written down some of the um, some of the frameworks that I'm gonna use for today's video and the first one we can say that this one is just my my own preference it's used to to remove all the warnings that are gonna be shown into the notebook then we're gonna use pandas because we are working with pandas data frames uh, i'm gonna use also matplotlib because at the end we are gonna implement also the roc curve uh, graph which will be uh, useful for us to see um, in a different way the performance of our model then i'm gonna use also the stats models uh, api uh, feature uh, a library which is gonna be useful for our pre-processing or feature selection uh, model uh, uh, in the model then the train and test split uh, then we also use the multinomial naive bias model and uh, at last, we have the classification report, which will be used to see the, the performance uh, of our model uh, during the, the predictions. So first we need to import our dataset. And the file that I'm using is called emails. Okay, now let's see the, the data into our data frames. And as you can see, we have, okay, I'm gonna remove head because I need to explain a little bit the data set. This is not a data set that you normally will get because in this situation we have 302 columns and we have 5,000 we have 3000 uh, columns and we have 5100 rows but when you look in the names of the columns we can see that those are only words so basically this data set is a data set that is created from another data set so the first data set was only rows with with sentences and there was um, a column uh, where we had the classification it is a spam or not spam and there is a method um, to map these words into numerical uh, features because our model wants to have numerical features and uh, the values that we see here are basically the frequency of the word that uh, existed into that into that email so for example in email one we had one time ect two times a and and so on and so on but in email two we have we we can see that we have we had the word d eight times two 13 times ect 24 times and six times and so on and so on so this is how our model um takes the words and by its frequency so each word uh, by the frequency that it, it's seen into that prediction so in that classification because we have also the prediction the prediction is one is spam zero is not spam that means that if we see a 11 times let's let's say like that then we can classify it as spam. This is just a stupid prediction. This is just to, 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 to tell you as an example, but that's not how it works because the model sees inside, for example, some, um, some words that are like, for example, uh, please send money, that is a spam, or maybe um, te telemarketing email that also includes some 
some words that are um, pointing that that email is spam. So um, between the original file and this file, there was performed um, an operation, so pre-processing on the data, which we will see in the future how it can be done because um, this is very important when um, the machine learning models are used into natural la language processing uh, problems because here in this example we are looking to um, understand the sentiment of the email because that way our model will be able to understand if the email is spam or not spam so we'll see also this in the future don't worry but for the purposes of this video, just to see how the knife bias is uh, implemented, I'm gonna skip those steps and we're gonna see them in the future. Okay, so once we have our data set, we can see that um, the email number and the index of our data frame are the same, so minus one. So in our case, we can also eliminate this column because it's gonna make Problems for us because we also need to change the numerical. We can change it and it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five until 5172. Uh, so, in order to avoid that, let's say, extra column, we can drop that column and we're gonna use the index as our ID in our data set. So, let's, let's create, let's do that step. So, we say we do data frame is data set dot drop email email no okay i need to make it screen on the first axis so now if i print the df we don't have any more that that column and now we can go immediately on the model creation because we don't have uh, any more steps into uh, pre-processing of our data set. So we are just gonna create the two variables x and y and we're gonna split our data set into training and testing and then we're gonna call our knife bias model and implement it and then do a prediction and then see its performance so x is df.drop and our dependent variable is prediction so we are interested into the prediction so we need to drop it and we're gonna save it into our y variable so it's gonna be on the axis one and y equals to df dot prediction okay now we need to do our split so we have x train x test y train y test Test size is, in, in my case, is always 30% uh, of the of the data set, but that can be also changed. I would not go below 20% and above 40% because then you, in the first case where you have a very low percentage, then you don't have enough data to train your model. And then if you have more than enough so if you go more than 40 percent then you have too much data and then you can make it also um perform less because it can make or high bias or high variance so that's 0 0.3 for me seems that it's the, the sweet spot random save okay and now let's define our model so the model okay no. the model is gonna be multinomial and b and also this one has some default hyperparameters 
Mm, as in this video we will not modify those hyperparameters but we will see in the future how we can also modify hyperparameters and how they impact on the performance of the model. And now we're gonna train our model. So we're gonna do fit on the x train and y train variables. Now it's trained and now let's do a prediction. So we're gonna save the prediction into y underscore test and we call model predict predict x test so our model performed the prediction now we want to see the accuracy of our model so let's do the following step accuracy Okay, the accuracy of our model is 24%. So we can say that the performance is quite high. So we can be uh, confident that our model works pretty well. And with some fine tuning of the hyperparameters, we can go even more, even more. But we want to see also the details. So we want to see also the precision, the F1 score and the recall. And that one will give us more detailed information of the performance of our model. So looking only in accuracy is not enough for us. We want to make sure also that we have good recall, good F1 score and, um, and, and good precision. So we're going to do print. Classification report. And we're gonna use the test values and the prediction values. Okay, from this matrix here we can see that the precision of our model, or when the model predicts that um, the the email is spam or is is not spam. So zero is 98%, but the precision whether the email is spam, so one is 0 0.86. This might be for different reasons. Uh, there might be, for example, in our training data set that there were not enough um, records for the class one, so for the class spam. and that's maybe that's why our um our model did not perform that well so because this is a huge difference between these two and we need to see what was the reason but for our video we will not do this but in the future we will see uh, by changing the the, hi the hyper parameters we can mitigate this issue here also, we can just change the test size, let's say go to 50% when we, we can see the performance of the model again. So let's run it again. Okay, so before we had, we had 0 0.84, now we have 0 0.87. This means that even increasing the test size did not help a lot. So I think that here we need to do also some hyperparameter tuning. But anyway, our weighted averages are quite good. So depending on the requirements, you can say this one, this model is performing well or not that much, but it can be used for some sort of problems. There is also another way to see the performance of the model by um using the ROC curve. So the ROC curve basically 
um, tells us um, also this information here that we have uh, into this into into this matrix but into a visual into a visual way so for this i have already prepared the code i'm just gonna take it and, and paste it um and you you can see it and and try to understand it but it's basically i can show you on the graph we have the false positive rate below and the true positive rate on the left um the blue line is our prediction so basically this is our uh, this is the work of of our model so you can see that it starts from zero and then it goes to almost one so this part here it goes to one but uh, the roc looks for the area under the curve so basically it takes everything that is below this blue line so uh, the area that is the area that is below this um, this blue line is 94 percent from the whole area that we see into this graph so this is what basically shows us this figure and the red dotted line is the random uh, prediction so basically uh, the the red dotted line shows us if we want to guess if the email is spam or not spam by using a coin toss because as we know the coin toss has a 50 50 percent uh, chain uh, chance and if we are using the coin toss method we will get this um this regression line here so that's only that uh, is shown into this graph Okay, so this was all about implementing the naive bias model on a real-world dataset. As I said before, we will see how to reach and how to modify our dataset in order to get this sort of dataset because this dataset is very important in the case of uh, naive bias model implementation. And Thank you very much for uh, watching this video until the end and see you in the next one. Bye bye.